Hello everyone and welcome to a video series that I've actually wanted to make for quite a while. And in this video series, I'm going to be going over how to create a aircraft in simple planes with varying degrees of difficulty. And episode 1 out of 7 will start very simply. This is just going to be to get your aircraft in the air and have it come down safely. Now note, if my flying looks smooth, that's because I'm using a joystick. That is completely optional, and you can use your keyboard instead. Now one thing to note, I do have a few mods enabled, but I will not be using these, and these do not affect any behavior or parts. So when you join your build and fly scenario, you will get a view that looks a lot like this. You'll have a few, uh, cockpit and a few fuselage blocks to work with. To make your plane fly, you need to know three basic things. Center of mass, center of lift, and center of thrust. And to enable those, to view them, you can press options and click on this icon right here, and it will display your center of mass, center of lift, and center of thrust. Your center of mass will be red, your center of lift will be blue, and your center of thrust will be orange. These will all shift depending on if you add parts and where. Now to get started, we want to extend our fuselage a little bit. To do that, you can press the plus sign, and then go into Structural. We're really only going to be working with blocks, angled blocks, and the like. We will not be using fuselage blocks or cones, because those get a bit complicated. We'll save those for a later video. Let's start by adding a few blocks onto the back of the fuselage. We'll drag them on, and to copy them, you can hold right-click. Do note that you can hold right-clicks on other parts to copy them as well. Note that the length of your aircraft can be however long you desire. Next, we want to add a fuel tank. This will allow our aircraft to fly and run the engine. If we back out of structural and instead go into propulsion, there is a 20 gallon fuel tank sitting there for you to use, along with an assortment of engines that we'll get into later. Go ahead and add a fuel tank or however many you desire. Do note that these are actually relatively heavy. I'll just be adding two. Next, we're going to add some propulsion. Throughout simple planes, there are various different methods of propulsion. However, there are two core ones, which are propeller and jet. These two engines have different properties, but the basis is propellers are typically more fuel efficient, but are slower than jet engines. We're going to go ahead and add the Blade T-1000, which is the weakest engine of these. You can add the propeller generally anywhere you like, but do note this does have an effect on how your aircraft handles. Next, we're going to add wings, and there are four different types of wings. Your primary wing, your vertical stabilizer, your horizontal stabilizer, and structural wing. The structural wing is tougher and more rigid than your other wings, however they have no control surfaces, meaning they can't be used to turn your aircraft. Your primary wing controls your roll which is the rotation of your aircraft. Your vertical stabilizer controls your yaw, which moves the nose left and right. Your horizontal stabilizer moves your aircraft up and down. We're going to add a primary ring just behind the cockpit. Don't worry about resizing it for now. We'll get to that later. Now we only added the wing on one side. To mirror this, we can hold Control m or go to the mirroring option. In the mirroring option, you can also change which side you're mirroring and change where the mirroring occurs. I'm going to be mirroring right down the center. Next, we need to add horizontal stabilizers. We are going to add these on the back of the aircraft, as that is where we'll have the most effect. Again, we're going to mirror this. It is at this point that I should note that you pay attention to the center of mass and center of lift. Ideally, your center of mass will be just in front of the center of lift. Too close to the center of lift, and your aircraft will become unstable. Too far away, 
and the thing won't be able to turn. There's a good balance. Right here should be fine. The vertical stabilizer has no effect on the center of lift. It slightly influences the center of mass. Now we can change the wing size. To do this, you can click on the wing, press settings, and here you can also see what's inside the wing, including the fuel. I'll be getting rid of the fuel in the wings, as we don't need them for now. However, if you wish to keep them in, you can certainly do so. You can add control surfaces in the bottom left hand of the screen. However, there is no need for me to do that, as there already is one. Note that you cannot add control surfaces to structural wings. For now, I'm going to edit the wing shape, which is the top button on the menu. However, you can also double click on the wings to edit them. In this overlay, there are different arrows you can drag, and they influence different sections of the wing. Feel free to play around with these if you want. All I'm going to be doing is changing the wing size. Note that the different shape of wing you have, the more it influences your aircraft. Since I don't feel like editing the other wing, I'm just going to delete it and re-mirror. Next, we need landing gear. The landing gear will allow you to move across the ground and get into the air, as well as land safely without all the spontaneous combustion. Generally, your landing gear should keep your aircraft level, but this isn't always the case. Wing landing gears can only be attached to wings, while other landing gears can only be attached to fuselage blocks or, or other solid objects. This should do the trick. After recording this section, I realized I used a landing gear that was too small for the craft, and I ended up resizing the propeller blades to be way too small. So in this, I'm just correcting the blade's length and also explaining how to edit propeller properties. So, yeah, I did mess up here, sorry for that. The longer your blades are, the more thrust they produce. Think of having a small fan versus a large one. Blade thickness also changes an engine's properties. However, we will not be focusing on that for now. Play around with it if you'd like. Now we need to add landing gear to the back. We want to add landing gear just behind the center of mass, but not too far behind, or too close to it, to prevent tipping. In this case, we'll add wing landing gear. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just meant to get up in the air and fly. We will add wing landing gear here and mirror it to the other side. It may not be the prettiest aircraft, but it will get off the ground. Now we are ready to fly. As you can see, the aircraft may not have the best performance in the air. However, as long as it flies, that's a win. We're simply trying to make something that flies, not something that is incredibly beautiful. As long as the aircraft can turn, roll, pitch, and yaw, and come down on the ground safely, and take off safely, then you've made yourself a working aircraft. If you'd like, replay the videos and follow the steps more closely. Your plane can look as different from mine as you'd like it to be. Once again, note that I'm using a joystick. Keyboard controls will look a lot more sloppy than this.